Depending on who you ask, the world is either overpopulated or on its way to overpopulation. And in the next 10 years, the world would see an increase in environmental problems such as rising atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, global warming, and pollution. Why? Because these problems are aggravated by population expansion. Add that to the inevitable destruction of forests and other habitats, it becomes pretty obvious that there are trying times ahead. The good news is, people from all walks of life have been working overtime to proffer possible solutions to these impending problems. Science has brought forth family planning, the government suggested one-child legislation, and architecture has brought forth the concept of vertical cities. In today's video, we're going to discuss vertical cities, architecture's solution to overpopulation. While some people believe that vertical cities are the future, others believe they're an overpriced whim. Today we're going to look at both sides of the argument, and then we will let you determine where you stand. What is a vertical city? A vertical city is essentially an arrangement of interconnected megatowers, created based on the principles of building upwards rather than outwards. Simply put, a vertical city is very similar to a skyscraper, only it's on a much larger scale. Vertical cities are more like communities of skyscrapers than anything else. When you think of vertical cities, think cities consisting of interconnected megatowers. These megatowers will comprise shops, restaurants, housing, hospitals, schools, farms, recreational centers, and outdoor spaces. The Appeal Over the years, skyscrapers have gained massive popularity for being a great way to maximize land usage as well as symbols of economic wealth and advanced technology for the areas where they are located. Plus, they provide unbeatable views and possess the ability to accommodate large populations. Seeing that skyscrapers have all these and more to offer, it's no wonder that the concept of vertical cities is so appealing and is considered a solution to the world's most pressing problems. Vertical cities take the concept of skyscrapers and expand it to tackle environmental problems and solve the problems of overpopulation, overcrowding, rising house prices, and enhance food security. Here's how overpopulation and overcrowding. While the concept of a vertical city doesn't exactly help to reduce overpopulation, it's an efficient way to manage it. As the population increases, the demand for accommodation and other basic amenities increases as well. This will eventually lead to the destruction of forests and swamps to build houses, schools, shopping centers, hospitals, and factories. Unless, of course, we adopt the principle of building upwards instead of outwards. Building upwards provides the most efficient use of space for a growing population while protecting the natural habitat of plants and animals and preventing the depletion of natural resources. The taller a building, the more the number of occupants it can house, thus maximizing land usage and reducing overpopulation. Rising house prices As the population increases, so does rent. With each passing year, housing prices become more exorbitant, and the concept of vertical cities would solve this problem by providing affordable housing. Plus, who doesn't want to live in a high-rise building that offers an affordable view of a beautiful skyline? Tackling environmental problems Rising atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, global warming, and pollution are some of the major environmental problems that the world is faced with today. And these problems can be reduced if people live lives that are less dependent on automobiles. Now, allow us to put that in perspective for you. If we all lived in vertical cities where our places of work or schools and residence are either in the same tower or within walking distance, there would be no need for automobiles. This development, which can be brought about by the adoption of the vertical city concept, would do the environment much needed good. In addition to these benefits, vertical cities also have high energy conservation potential, promote agglomeration, and are designed to be self-sufficient. The Drawbacks Considering all these attractive benefits, it's easy to get carried away wondering why the surface of the Earth isn't already covered in vertical cities since they may seem to be the solution to most of the problems the human race is faced with. Well, the Earth isn't covered in vertical cities just yet because the concept has quite a few drawbacks as well. Let's take a look at some of the reasons vertical cities are considered overpriced whims. Mental health concerns It has been scientifically proven that a lack of sunlight can cause sadness and depression. Vertical cities are to be designed in such a way that all the necessary amenities are contained in the mega towers, so its inhabitants will have little or no cause to go outside. 
On one hand, this is incredibly convenient, but on the other hand, this development may have a negative impact on the emotional well-being of the vertical city's occupants and their all-around productivity, thus doing more harm than good. Lack of available labor and necessary resources while some engineers and architects believe that the technology, resources, and technical know-how required to build a vertical city already exists, others do not share this sentiment. Going with the school of thought that is of the opinion that all the necessary resources required to build vertical cities are available, it is important to note that these resources would be extremely expensive. Which brings us to the next drawback – the cost. High cost. While building a vertical city and saving the planet sounds like a great plan, what's not so great is the cost implication. Construction of vertical cities would cost a king's ransom, seeing how these funds aren't readily available. The big wigs capable of funding the project would have to be thoroughly convinced that vertical cities are indeed the way forward. And this might prove to be a bit difficult. Risk factors For vertical cities to thrive, the architects and engineers involved in the process would have to be extremely meticulous and perfect. In such a setting, making a mistake is not an option, as sad mistake could have calamitous results in the long run. A seemingly harmless mistake, like not considering the temperature outside while pouring concrete, can cause cracks and areas of weakness, and ultimately end in disaster. Furthermore, several escape routes would have to be incorporated into the design in case of any emergency. Let's not forget that if all necessary amenities are supplied indoors, people will have no reason to walk the streets. And is it a city if people can't interact on the streets? Also, the occupants of these mega towers may be claustrophobic. And there is the concern of the buildings disrupting the skyline and interfering with the feel and culture of historic neighborhoods. Having looked at both sides of the arguments, it's easy to see the principles that each school of thought is built on. While we may not see any vertical city just yet, this arrangement of interconnected mega towers is a lasting solution to our overpopulation and environmental problems. Furthermore, they offer endless possibilities that are absolutely stunning and breathtaking. If, and only if, we continue to study the concept in order to proffer possible solutions to all the drawbacks and challenges, vertical cities just may be the key to sustainability. With that, we have come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already subscribed, and turn on post notification to stay updated on all our videos. Also, let us know in the comment section if you think the concept of vertical cities is an achievable plan or an overpriced whim. Bye!